happy. Um, first of all, let me say uh, that I wanted to play this piece because it is just one of the most joyful pieces I can think of. And don't we all need a little bit more joy today? As well, you know, the unassailable logic of Bach really has been helping me through these chaotic, weird, unprecedented times. And the timelessness of it and the reminder that this really old, old music has survived all kinds of things. So we too shall survive this. I want to say thank you to Kim for giving us this chance to play together. I love playing with Tom, and um, it's such a treat to play for you all. Jake and David and, um, and Sal, thank you so much for everything you've done, the rehearsals, the teaching, and thank you to the students I've heard this week who have been such a pleasure to um, teach and, and learn from as well. So from the oldest piece on the program, the Bach, we're going to jump ahead to the 20th century? Yeah, second oldest piece. To the second oldest piece, and and welcome Tom, and he'll say a few words about Ernst Toch. Ernst Toch might be unfamiliar to you. I just wanted to show you guys yeah. all this book. Um, he is a um, uh, Ernst Toch was a Vien an Austrian composer, Austrian composer from. I'm sure. Cut off, an Austrian composer from the uh, early 20th century. He died in the 1960s, and um, like a lot of Austrian composers, he fled the Nazis and came to Hollywood and wrote some incidental music for movies. Um, but this piece that we're about to play, he wrote a couple of divertimentos for the, um, the Vienna String Quartet, which included the first violinist Rudolf Kolisch, who you might have heard of from the Kolisch Quartet. Um, but anyway, the idea is that Talk said that he wrote these pieces for the quartet because sometimes not everybody shows up for rehearsal and so if you just have a couple of people, maybe you can work on one of these. There's a piece, this is the piece for violin and cello, and he also wrote one for violin and viola. And I think he also had some violin duo, so he had it pretty much covered. Um, this is a really, again, another really joyful piece and one of our favorite duos to play. It's in three movements, titled Flot, Fliesend, and Frisch, which I kind of think of as the Austrian Three Stooges. Um, it's, uh, the first movement is acrobatic and uh, charming. The whole piece is very short, about eight minutes long. The second movement, which is kind of my favorite, is played entirely with the mute. Um, and it's very mysterious, and it makes me think of you know bad guys up to no good in some back room somewhere. And then the last movement is, again, joyfully jumping and, uh, and throughout with uh, kind of spicy harmonies, and uh, it's just a lot of fun.
So I just want to say a little bit about um, um, Nancy and that she's going to introduce the piece. I met Nancy um, years and years ago, I want to say 25 years ago or something, when we were both teaching at the Walden School for Young Composers in a summer program in New Hampshire, which is still going on, um, but neither of us is there anymore. Um, and she's not only a fantastic composer, but as Kim said, um, uh, she's a, a beautiful soprano, and we did uh, uh, a lot of playing together, as well as a lot of uh, uh, great conversations about music and about things that aren't music. So um, always excited to play her piece, and uh, I'll let you, I'll let her take over now and, and introduce the piece itself. Well, spirituals have long been... Is that better? That's great a creative inspiration for me. I've written uh, spirituals for piano and also a uh, spiritual for the Proces Reduet. This particular piece I wrote for Tom, it was also uh, part of a project to try to get to know um, instruments better. I was going to do a series of pieces, uh, solo pieces for instruments. That didn't happen, however. <laughs> I uh, was very happy to write this piece for Tom. And the way I first presented the spiritual, I'm going to tell God all my troubles, I went to present it as a work song. And uh, you'll hear that very strong rhythm. And then I gradually moved away from the um, from the total spiritual and using melodic contours from the spiritual as a way of kind of reflecting on the on the song and uh, that's in fact how I think of the entire piece actually as a reflection on the spiritual and so I was uh, very very happy to write this piece for Tom and he plays it very beautifully and I'm very grateful for his interest
Thanks to Nancy for the great piece. Uh, we decided to follow this with just a short um, arrangement of, of an arrangement of the traditional song, uh, Shall We Gather at the River. This was Copeland's arrangement um, as one of his old American songs, and it's just one of my favorite 
songs to play and to listen to. And it's also something that I feel as a nation we could really just do, gather at the river. going to move on to a piece that I wrote um, almost exactly 20 years ago now, I think. And I wrote it because Julie and I had a concert in Maryland, and I had just started writing music, and we were trying to come up with a program, and Julie was in touch with the presenter, and she said, well, my husband's a composer, he'll write something. So, um, so thanks. <laughs> now we have a piece. Um, this is, um, it's just called Three Pieces for Violin and Cello. The first, they're just sort of short character pieces. It really is one of the first pieces that I ever completed and performed. Um, uh, the first piece is called Barcarolle. It's sort of like a, a boat song. It's entirely in 5-4, so I guess it's a slightly lopsided boat. Um, but it's, it's okay, it, it doesn't sink. Um, the second, piece is called Soliloquy. Uh, it starts with a cello solo because while I was writing it, I, I had originally started writing a solo cello piece and then kept getting stuck at a certain point and then realized what I needed was a violin to enter at that point. And then the third movement is um, based... The it's, title? The title is Scherzo Quasi Presto. Um, and it's based on the dog that we owned back then. Who's that, that guy? His name was Preston. Everybody say, oh! He was, uh... He was my baby. He was also kind of a holy terror. Um, and uh, we tr I tried to, uh, uh, th there were lots of aspects of, oh, we got, we got an awe from the church. Thank, you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, the first time we met him, we went to adopt him at this place, and he ran up to Tom, and put his paws on his knees, and said, Wah! and he ran away. Yeah, and so that's kind of in the music. Yeah. He would also 
um, slip off his leash and run away. And he was very, very fast. He was a Jack Russell. And he would turn around and laugh at us, like the biggest smile on his face. So he, he was a terror. Miss you, Preston. <laughs>
Sudden Unbidden. Um, I think uh, this Anna is, a, is someone that, that I've known for, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say anymore, 10 years or something like that. Uh, uh, we both uh, know each other at, at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I've played a lot of her music and it's always, uh, always a privilege. So I'll just let her talk about the piece. Okay, hi. Um, let's see. Was that Anna's voice? Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi, Anna. Hi. Um, thank you, Tom. Yeah, I'm not going to count the years either. Um, uh, thank you so much for um, having me. It's great to hear about this program. It sounds really exciting. Um, and I'm honored to be part of this, this program. Uh, so I'll just say a couple of things about the piece um, you're about to hear. There are two um, melodic bits that I would draw your attention to. The first is um, the very first thing that you hear in the piece. It's kind of a short, rhythmically activated, bluesy thing that definitely has, reveals the influence of rock and roll. Um, the second melodic idea, I guess, um, I would ask you to listen for comes after the sort of introductory passage. I don't know, maybe it's like a minute into the piece. Um, and it's a much longer trajectory, romantic, classically, I guess, oriented melody, a very different kind of melody that sort of just drops in um, out of nowhere. You hear it first when Tom is playing a tremolo on a very, very high harmonic, um, and Juliet plays this, this tune that kind of just appears whole from nowhere. And, um, and that connects with the title of the piece, which is Sudden Unbidden. Um, I was thinking about how a lot of things are planned and worked for and um, pursued, but some things just happen, just drop in. So this was an attempt to, to think about that. Um, and I think it also connects to the, the possibility, maybe the problem of writing a melody. Um, I think I'm influenced by all kinds of music. I listen to all kinds of music, I always have. Um, I think given the 20th century uh, and trying to write notated art music in a classical tradition, um, there's a challenge to writing a melody, finding a way to write a melody. Um, and so um, it's sort of about finding a way for that melody to exist, finding a space for that melody to inhabit. Um, 
the piece is in a sense a multi-movement piece it has um several different sections but it's played continuously so it's sort of like a typical multi-movement piece in a way but where the things are sort of interwoven and um it's played without pause continuously there's a lot of interruption in this piece um and uh and it's been great fun uh, I got to hear Juliet and Tom play a little bit yesterday and they sound absolutely amazing. And one of the things that I, I think I like best is the way the um, two instruments can overlap. Um, so they're very distinct, very different ranges in a sense, but then they can also overlap and you can almost get confused about how many people are in the room and who's playing high and who's playing low, which is, um, which is sort of fun. Um, so so I'll yeah I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Thank you so much again. I'm pleased to to be part of this. Thank you, Anna.